Oof, that white balance though. Welcome back, another mailbag today, guys, but check this out. I've been working on testing some new uh, Wi-Fi enabled outlets for, uh, for the Alexa, and check this out. Alexa, turn studio on. Oh yes, everything, all at once. Alexa, set printer light 20%. <laughs> pretty happy these things are working great so i finally got everything all set in up in groups and the outlets are working awesome let's do a mailbag okay before we go to the outside portion here's the most random thing in the mailbag check this out i needed these for my eeg headsets and stuff and just handy to have something to put headphones and whatever when if i do some reviews on but unfortunately he got his nose punched in but still gonna do the job Next, some hemostats. I have never had a decent pair of hemostats before. These are used for fishing, and in the case of me, I needed a replacement clamp for fuel lines on small engines. And these will do the job nicely. They're good quality steel by the feels of them. They, they, the, the clamp force is really good and I think it'll do the job so we'll give them a try next out of the package some more Game Boy games for the retro Game Boy projects coming up they're still coming on the channel I still have the devices standing by for review and baseball and Zelda both fun little games from my past and next up Oh, check these out. I have had these before on the channel, and I don't think I've ever done a proper review of them. These are USB-powered soldering irons. Now, you would really think that these things are junk. They're non-temperature controlled. They're just wide open or nothing. They come with only this really sharp tip. But they work magnificent with a LiPo battery. These things will solder ESC wires on my quadcopters, no problem. They actually work really well. And for somebody who has used a paper clip and a Bic lighter in the bush to solder wires, this is a significant step up. And these things only cost a few bucks. They use a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. I bought two of them because honestly, they do work better than anticipated. I do a review, but honestly, everybody will just balk and chew and you got to have a TS and blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't use a TS. I use these stations. This thing I've had since my teenage years and this WEP I've had, I don't know, 10 years now and it works fantastic. I don't need the TS ones, but I do need a cheap soldering iron I don't care about to throw in the bottom of backpacks and toolboxes and you name it. These things work fantastic. If you guys want to see me use one, post a comment down below and I, I will do a quick review. Next up out of the package, random stuff. I think this fell from somewhere. Two little buck converters. I think these are probably an amp or two, maybe a little bit more. I can't remember. I'd have to, I, I don't even know how these things <laughs> fell out of their, uh, their bins, but they're adjustable there with a little trimmer on board, wonderful little devices, and then some three and a half millimeter audio connections. Um, I need these for a specific project because I actually ordered the wrong ones. The footprint is always wrong. I always get it wrong. So I'm hoping these ones get it right. And speaking of PCBs, this pro this episode is brought to you in part by PCB Way. It's a great source for any custom PCBs you need. If you have a project in mind, go ahead and design the PCB and have them fabricate it and even assemble your circuit for you. Check them out. Great deals. Next up, something I certainly do not need. Yet another hot end for my 3D printers. I have no idea how this managed that I got so many of them, but... Handy to have the thermistor, handy to have the hot end. I don't need them uh, at all. My i3 Mega, uh, I have not I have not changed the hot end or even the nozzle on. So uh, yeah, we'll use it. Little spudger set, check this out. This is um, 
I think they're marketed mainly towards like iPhone repair and MacBook repair and stuff like that, but it's handy to have some of these different sizes of tweezers. The tweezers, meh. I I like these tweezers that I that you can get on Amazon or eBay uh, a lot better, but this little metal spudger, very handy. Uh, for some reason, I managed to lose mine. These little plastic single-edge razor blades, very, very handy. And then this little spudger as well, this plastic one. And yet another one here as well. So yeah, handy dandy, cheap, good enough. And speaking of my cheap solder station, <laughs> I very seldom go through uh, an iron anymore. I used to burn them up sometimes because the web is, um, I run it wide open all the time and these cheap, um, these cheap irons, they will degrade here. Uh, they're like two, three dollars a piece. And when you do this, you have enough to last you many, many years. Uh, now I'm good. Now I never, <laughs> never need to order another one. This one I'm using is just fine. This is several years old. It's a little oxidized, a little bit rough looking on the tip, but I have lots of tips, but this is not melted out or anything. And I run it, I run it full tilt boogie all the time. Uh, people who set their temperature down low, just aggravating, run it wi wide open. And the worst case scenario is you melt out these cheap tips, but your soldering will be 10 times better. Tasty tip. Another random little bit of LED strips, handy dandy. I think I have no recollection of what project I ordered those for, but they are, I believe, RGB LEDs. We'll give them a try. And one last one before we go outside. Oh yeah, I've been waiting for this for a long time. This is a patch antenna for my 5.8 gigahertz FPV equipment. I'm gonna give this a try on my diversity receiver if it ever shows up. I ordered it forever ago. Uh, connections for right and left hand circular polarized. And we're running right on all of our stuff. And that'll plug right into my FPV goggles. And this triple feed patch will work pretty good for a direct line of sight. This, this gets signal directly um, it won't it won't if it's skewed 90 degrees it'll be very very low signal uh, very high noise content but it's straight on this will work good when it's facing the quad we're gonna give it a go these things seem to work pretty good and that'll stick out the front of my goggles my, with my omni over on the other side and then the diversity will switch between them whatever signal is stronger either this patch or the omni it will switch between them so yeah cool check it out so check this out. I got this from the ReStore the other day. 10 bucks for has a skill saw, sawzall, drill, vacuum, and a light up in the top. Uh, old incandescent style bulb, but whatever. Problem was, no battery. And this Mastercraft stuff is long, long dis discontinued. Yeah, 10 bucks. I went on Facebook and posted I wanted one of these batteries and sure enough a guy finally got back to me in the in the area I live in and sold me this for 50 bucks with three usable batteries. I don't even have to make my own otherwise I just wanted the case so I could make a lithium polymer battery out of them. Probably go to 18 volts all this stuff will be able to handle 18 volts just fine but now I've got three batteries and enough bloody 14.4 cordless stuff to do me for a long time. These skill saws are bloody handy. This one looks like it hardly even got used so pretty pretty happy. He also gave me another drill 14.4 as well that fits that charger but it's a different battery and he said well it fits your charger so you might as well have it so yet another drill good enough for the workshop. I hate seeing this stuff go to landfill, especially when it's perfectly serviceable and I can rebuild these batteries forever. You can also put brushes in the motors if you want. And not the most powerful stuff out there, but heck, it'll do the job. Score.